There's a growing movement to recall City Council President Jen Campbell from District 2. The petitioners of that movement would need around 14,000 signatures by June to trigger a special election. I spoke to some of the organizers of this effort to find out why they think a recall is necessary. This is not just about us recalling her. It's about us holding elected officials accountable for those lives that they are supposed to be representing. She is a doctor. If she needed to have a surgery, she would not wait until a year to have that surgery if she needed that surgery right away. We should not be waiting. Now, one of their biggest concerns is an ordinance proposed by City Council President Campbell that she's going to put in front of the City Council on Tuesday on regulating short-term vacation rentals. I got a chance to catch up with her about her constituents' worries. So I want to start out with, obviously, the recall movement. You're facing a recall right now. Are you worried about it at all? No. What are your thoughts about this effort? I think it's a, a terrible waste of time and money. Uh, it's going to cost the city about $2 million to put on a special recall election just for District 2. And there's no reason. Recall should be reserved for uh, people in office who have done immoral acts or criminal acts. I've done none of that. And so I think it's a, a total waste. And the other thing is the timing. It it's, would happen around the same time as a re-election campaign. So it, it's not necessary. I did get a chance to speak to some of the organizers behind the movement, and I wanted to talk to you about some of their concerns. And I know these are also some of your priorities right now. One is uh, the short-term vacation rental ordinance. Tell me a little bit about that. You're bringing that to city council on Tuesday. That's so correct. tell me about that, and why do you think that some of your constituents think that this is a bad compromise. Very few people are against this ordinance. They're very vocal and they're very wealthy. And so they're against it. Most people are in favor of it. And we have a broad coalition in the city that is in favor of it. And we worked this out over several years, uh, bringing everyone together, community, uh, platforms, uh, owners, everyone came together and gave their ideas, and we tried to incorporate all of those into the ordinance as best we could. We have to follow the laws, property rights, etc. So, what the reason we did this ordinance is twofold mainly. Mm -hmm. Number one, there is a housing shortage in San Diego, and this ordinance puts a cap, puts a limit on the number of whole home rentals, it will go down by about 65%. And what that means is more places to live will become available for San Diegans who live and work here. So that's one of the things is to produce more housing for San Diegans. And it will be in the thousands. The next, the next thing is the quality of life for those who live in the neighborhoods with the short-term rentals. Sometimes there are tremendous problems for the neighbors of these places. So when we have regulation and enforcement, then the people who are creating problems will lose their license and they will no longer be allowed to have that, that short-term rental. So it, it solves two, two big problems. It helps with housing and it helps with the quality of life. Why is banning them altogether not an option? Uh, that would not be considered legal. It is not. First of all, they don't exist in our current laws. Therefore, we've had the Wild West. They don't exist in law, so we can't enforce anything on them. But on the other hand, they exist in reality. And so what's happened over the years is they have exponentially grown in number. And now they just take up thousands of apartments and homes that should be dwelled in by San Diegans who live here full time. And I mean, before we actually turn the cameras on, I mean, we got a chance to chat, and it seems like you think that having these in moderation, though, is a good thing for the city, right? I think we have to be realistic. Mm -hmm. The platforms are here to stay. They're worldwide. People love them. People use them on vacation quite often. San Diego is the second largest vacation place in America. And so it, it, it would be impossible, especially at this point, especially since the the government before this one in the city has collected tax on some of them. 
our transient occupancy tax. You cannot pretend that they don't exist when you're taxing them. Mm -hmm. I, I think if this went to court, uh, the court would come down on common sense and say, look, these things exist. Go ahead, regulate, uh, control them as you should, but make sure that you follow a responsible law, responsible cooperation among all interested parties. And that's exactly what we've done. And you know, the Coastal Commission has a lot to say about this. Mm -hmm. The California Coastal Commission is in charge of our entire coast up and down the state. And they insist that people have access to the beaches and they insist that people have access to accommodations mm -hmm. that are reasonable. Mm -hmm. And so they will not allow for these things to go away. And therefore we have to fashion what we do to fit into all the nuances of what is required. And straight ahead on Politically Speaking, the CDC says schools could reopen in many places, but are we ready? I talked to a teacher and a parent about their thoughts. Stay with us.